Rosemont, Illinois. I'm David Lusso for Coin Week, and again for our Coin Week viewers, I walked around the room to talk to the dealers and collectors to find out what kind of really cool items they brought to show us. You're going to enjoy this one. You're going to see some really exciting silver dollars, all kinds of modern issues, and some very cool gold coins. We found a collection in Maryland that had been put together in the 40s, and a part of this collection was an original pan pack set, a five piece pan pack set with the $250 gold pieces in particular. And we had PCGS grade the coins. They both graded AU58. This is the round, just a beautiful collector grade coin and hasn't been really touched since the day it was put in the mint, except I think that the gentleman who bought it may have rubbed it up a little bit, so it's AU58. And then the octagonal which CAC also endorsed. So between us, between uh, these two coins, I think we had uh, our fair share of cool coins for this coin show. And, and do you know why they made a round and an octagonal? What were they trying to do at the time? What was the logic behind it? Well, it was, uh, these were struck in 1915 for the San Francisco Exposition. There were only uh, 600 of the octagonals and about 485 of the rounds. They were struck for presentation purposes. They were given out at the show for 29 dignitaries. Each one of them had their uh, a set given them to them. Why they struck the octagonal, I don't know, but it may go right back to the days of the gold rush when in San Francisco, more about 60 years before that, they were making the Humberts and the Assay 20, uh, the Assay 50s. What kind of value? Well, the values of these are, are pretty well pegged at about uh, Fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars per coin. Well, we always bring cool coins, but today we have a 1921 Morgan dollar, which is the most common Morgan dollar. They made huge quantities of these. I think over 20 million of them. Uh, however, this is actually a coin that's in 64 deep mirror proof, like, and uh, it's actually very scarce. So, despite the fact they made millions, there's actually less than 15 have been certified deep mirror proof, like, by PCGS. And there's only one coin actually higher grade than this one. Now, how does a coin become a deep mirror proof light? So when the dies are originally manufactured, they're highly polished. They'll also uh, repolish the dies after a period of time to eliminate some of the wear. And each time that happens, it creates what would look like a mirrored surface on the coin, which is how they, they came out with deep mirror proof like dollars. It wasn't their intention. However, that was the result. And how popular are these with collectors? Uh, very popular. It's uh, one of the things that we do is every time we come to a show, we're always looking to replace inventory. And each show, there, there's less and less deep mirror proof like dollars out there to choose from. What kind of value? Uh, well, for a coin like this, this is about $8,000. For a, a normal MS64 dollar, you can buy for about 75. So that's that much scarcer and that much rarer. And they're very well sought after, a lot of collectors. It is the 2014 Tuvalu one ounce silver Augusta St. Gaudens coin. And I designed this coin because I wanted to pay homage to the designers of our coins. A lot of people don't even know what St. Gaudens looked like. They know his work, but they don't know him. And we minted 1,500 of these coins. It's extremely limited mintage. And every one of them comes with a signed certificate. I signed the numbered certificates for the collectors and it's the coolest coin here. How difficult is it to get countries to sponsor striking coinage like this? It isn't highly difficult, it's just a very complicated process. And what are the themes on each side of the coin? On the, um, on the queen side, of course, is the required portrait of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It's an Ian Rank Broadley uh, effigy of the queen. And then on the flip side is Augustus St. Gaudens as uh, he comes from the photograph to the, uh, to the coin. And then behind him is his most famous design, the, the $20 double eagle. And I, I kind of put them together on the coin. There's actually two different surfaces to this coin, actually three different. You have the, uh, the, the shiny mirror background or the field, and then you have the semi-frosted coin and then you have the fully frosted effigy of St. Gaudens. So that's another unique thing about this coin. And how about the different holders? There's some of them that are marked release at different 
different venues? What is yes. this? Actually, these are marked as Chicago ANA releases because this coin made its world debut right here this week at the Chicago ANA. How important is that to collectors now? It's actually pretty important because it shows that this coin was purchased right when it first came out. And what kind of value? Value? Uh, well, right now we're selling them at a show special, $99 for the NGC 69 or the uh, uh, original government packaging, and then $109 for the NGC Proof 70. It is a 1923 piece dollar MS66. I saved up for it all year, and it's a really, really great coin for me because uh, I spent a lot of time looking for it, and I finally found the right one. And tell me again, what's neat about a piece dollar? Why do you like that one? Well, I really like it because of it kind of has a little frost on it, so it kind of looks like, you know, in the fridge a little bit or something, but just the eagle with the details of the feathers and the talons on the rock of the piece, and then just the, uh, the hair with the, the kind of like a tiara, but not really. Okay, not to be rude, but just to help other collectors know, what kind of value for a coin like that? Well, I spent $575 on this coin, but if you can find the right coin and the right dealer, they can give you a good deal like I just got. And what would you say to other young people about coins that might make them want to become interested? Well, coins, they're just... I don't know, you just have to have the knack for it and it's just they're really fun to collect and you meet so many new people and learn so many new things that it just catches on and it's just it's a lifestyle. You know the coolest coin we've got in our cases today are the uh, is this 1866 seated dollar. It is, a, it is a motto version but it is a Men's State 67. There's only two mottos so graded in the entire series. It is a uh, it is a very uh, spectacular coin with great luster across the front uh, and peel surfaces and the back has this wonderful cabinet toning that's blue and green and has some palm and essence coming out of it. The, the amazing piece of a part of this coin is not just the condition but the eye appeal of this coin is that of a, of a Morgan silver dollar. It is a spectacular in hand eye appeal for a seated dollar. And why is there a difference between a motto and a no motto? You know, during the uh, during the series, there was a lot of in, in early mint. There was a lot of controversy over whether or not they should put "In God We Trust" on the back of a coin, and uh, it flopped back and forth. And it, uh, this one hasn't. Right. What kind of value? Um, this coin is listed on our website at two hundred sixty thousand dollars.